Hey, Heidi here, and I am so excited. We have two people here who are conquering the paint party world, and um, we also have a furry animal here, which I'm really excited. What is your dog's name? <laughs> it's it's Derby. He's very emotionally um, needy. Oh, well, I love <laughs> Derby. I'm happy to be here, but we're also happy to have Tammy and Kristen here as well. And Tammy has had 86 painters recently, so we're going to talk about that. And then also Kristen having bookstores holding um, her art kits and actually selling her art kits. So we have a lot to unpack in this um, short time together. So welcome, ladies. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. Oh, this is awesome. Okay, so let's just dive right in. Tammy, oh my gosh, 86 painters. Okay, so tell us your business name and how did 86 painters at once happen? Okay, I'm the owner of the Spirit of Canvas, and years ago, um, a medical school found me online and asked me if I wanted to come and do a paint party with their medical students, like right before finals. They just kind of needed a chill time, and I said, absolutely. So that started several years ago, maybe five or six years ago, and I've painted with them twice a year, every year since then. Wow. For how many so, years? What's that? How many years have you done that? I think five or six years with this particular school. Tammy, congrats. So, yeah, it's it's been great. And I've, you know, got a relationship with them and I've seen like a whole class of medical students go through and you see them, you know year after year, and I do custom paintings for them. So I do like the school mascot and the school colors. So I've done all of that for them. And this past one I did, um, yeah, they had 86 people sign up. Wow. So we, you know, carted in, paid supplies for 86 people and we painted it. And of course I had my crew with me. I can't do that one by myself for sure, but yeah, it's awesome. It's, um, it's one of those that I feel very blessed to, to have that contact and that relationship. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I tell people so many times, like once you start developing relationships with certain groups or certain organizations, it just, it's natural for them to want to do a yearly event or a repeat event. So I know a lot of times when people start a paint party business, they're like, it's, it feels so heavy at the beginning, you know? So I think we got to take that pressure off ourselves and just, you know, have those practice parties, have those guinea pig parties, and then just build it up. So that is really impressive. We're going to talk more um, about kind of your habits and your, some, you know, kind of like what's making you successful. But let's bring Kristen in. Kristen, okay, so tell us what is going on with this bookstore and tell us the name of your business. Um, my business name is Art for the Soul by Kristen. And I just reached out to, um, I reach out to a lot of businesses. Um, like I take your advice and reach out to five, six, seven businesses a day. And um, a couple businesses, um, bookstores wrote back and said they would be interested. And so I started with, they're just um, kind of local family owned, um, been in business for quite some time type businesses. And so they, um, the one bookstore, the first bookstore is a um, independent bookstore and they um, did more of a consignment. Um, they take the a percentage of whatever they sell. So I just put, you know, however many they request. And when they sell, they request more. When they sell, they request more. So I kind of have that relationship with them. And then the other bookstore that I've um, begun another relationship with, they're more actually a sort of a gift shop and they're a little larger, still independent. Mm -hmm. They're the only one in the Valley. And um, they actually just bought um, to start. I just sold to them recently. So we'll see how that relationship goes, but they bought uh, 20 kits outright at a wholesale price. And um, so that was kind of a neat um, little different uh, relationship, um, but it was kind of neat because then I just kind of made up the kits and sold them all 20 kits all at once. 
And um, so I reached out to them a few times and they said the kits are going well. So once they said they um, sell all of them, they want to do more. And they did, they purchased um, half uh, winter kits and half fall kits. So, so how much are you selling them for wholesale? Um, because my kits normally sell retail for 15. So I sold them to them for 12. Okay. Um, 12 a piece. Okay. Awesome. And then 15 for retail. So the other bookstores, these family owned bookstores are you and y'all, I don't know if y'all do this or not, but I highly recommend it. Take notes. Like as you're hearing like little wisdom from different people and that are in the business doing this and you're interested in this, make sure you're taking notes. And even if you never read them again, it's been proven that it will stick more just by taking notes while you're listening. And I definitely have watched all of these kind of interviews and I've over, I've, I've been a part of paint party headquarters for about a year now. Uh, last October I joined yeah. and I've taken a lot of notes and I have soaked in a lot of information and I followed through with some of the notes and some notes just kind of stick in my head. And I've, I've definitely, it helps to take notes. <laughs> yeah. Whether you go yeah. back and look at your notes or not, a lot of information does stick in your head. <laughs> it's, uh, it's so true. It's like been scientifically proven too. There's something, I don't know, there's something with it, maybe with the hand, brain, I don't know. I'm going to get, say something wrong. But anyway, so with your kids, with the ones that aren't buying them wholesale, are they getting a percentage or are they just letting you? The first, the first store that is doing it um, more on consignment, um, they're taking a percentage. Um, it's 25%. Okay. So it's a little higher than I wanted, but it was my first time with a bookstore. So I'm kind of seeing how it goes. Yeah. And the relationship, um, if I love it, if I don't love it, um, it's, it's kind of trial and error. You know, I'm, I'm new at it and just getting my kids out there and it's in a area that has a lot of families. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was more of, um, not so much getting my kids um, to people to get the kids out there, but it was more of a uh, long-term goal of getting the hands, getting the kids in parents' hands mm -hmm. to maybe sparking interest of having paint parties. That was my end result in my head of, hey, this person does paint parties. Maybe I will look her up and see what other designs she has. That was my um, thought process when I was selling to this particular big bookstore in that particular area. No, that's great. I think that's brilliant. Um, yeah, anytime we can get creative. I know a lot of times people are like, well, paint parties for me aren't working. Here's a perfect example of how you can reach out to bookstores, even if you're not doing paint parties. And, and also another thing, a lot of times people are like, well, I'm not, I'm not in a place where I can really go do a paint party because Tammy doing a paint party, 86 painters, you are nonstop. Like that takes some like, you know, ability to move around and, and do all of that. So a lot of times people who want to stay at home and actually just pack kits that still have the opportunity to make money and not have to be running around is so, so good. So congratulations to both y'all. Okay. So let's get into some fun questions and um, habits for success. You know, the thing I probably get asked the most is, time management. Heidi, how do you do everything you do? Well, first off, I used to do everything alone. Now I do not. I'm very, very grateful. And I am a big, um, big believer. And if you have more than 10 people at a paint party, hire help. I used to be so stubborn and I'd run a party of 30 people by myself and I'd run myself ragged. Then I'd get up the next day and do two more parties the next day and run myself ragged because I just felt like, well, we need this money. I don't need to hire help. And now I'm getting smarter. I have five paint parties booked in December and you better believe there is help hired for every single one. Help for setup, help for cleanup, help for during, because it just makes everything smoother. So um, so let's talk about like some habits for success. Let's start with you, Tammy. Um, what is something like a typical day to keep you going, keep your business going? And um, how do you get it done? Well, I'm, you know, being an entrepreneur, you, you have to 
you have to be your own boss. You have to know that you're the one that you have to answer to. And if you slack, you're going to see it. You're, or you're not going to see it, really. It's going to be the opposite. Nothing's going to come in. So I, um, I'm i a little ADD. I like, I like things, you know, moving quickly, different things. So I do, I say I wear three hats. I teach corporate training. I do paint parties. And then I'm also an, an artist. I do fine art. So I have that ability to switch it when I'm getting bored with something. So that's, that works really well for me. The, the teaching that I do is regular. It's two days a week and I have to get up and I have to get dressed and I have to, you know, do that. But that motivates me even more. It's like, okay, I'm going to be done at whatever time I can start prepping for the paint party this weekend. And I love that because I have that ability to do that on my own time. But you still have to organize your day. You have to know that, okay, at whatever time, I'm going to take an hour to do this or an hour to do that, even if it's at 10 o'clock at night. That's what I love about this because sometimes I get energy, you know, at 930 and my husband's going to bed. I'm like, night, honey. And I'm, I'm running around the studio getting stuff ready for, you know, two days ahead. But that works really well for me. Mm-hmm. So I really like that. But um, it is easy. It's easy to procrastinate. And no one is saying, did you get that done? We've got, you know, it's in two days or it's tomorrow or it's this afternoon. Is everything ready to go? You've got to have that on yourself, you know, um, that motivation. And <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, just, you know, the drive to want it to happen. And when you do, when you do that and you make it happen, it's so rewarding. It's so great. Yeah. It's that business discipline and really nobody knows what we have to do in a day. So nobody, like even Bobby, he, he can't, I mean, he could come up here and be like, Hey, how's your day? But he would, he has no idea. Like he has no idea. I, I just missed a phone call from a paint party happening in a couple of weeks to, to do, you know, he doesn't understand, like, just like, you know, you know, anybody that's living with us, they don't know what has to be done. So it is fully on us. We could pretend like we have nothing to do today, which we know that's not true. Or we have, we, we know that is never not true as a, as an artist and an entrepreneur Um, so I think it's really great. So yes, you, you have these things. I know for me, um, my kind of like North star to get crap done is my paper calendar. What is it for you, Tammy? Like, what do you use to keep you on track? (laughs) Is it a paper calendar? Oh, good. Everything is, everything is here and a reminder, you know, a reminder two hours before. So I've got two hours. If I haven't taken a shower, I still have two hours to do that because that that's one thing that gets me working from home. You don't, you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to get up and get dressed. So that's one thing that I fail at, you know, if I'm in my sweats and my hair's in a ponytail, I still have two hours to get ready for whatever it needs to be. If I need to be on camera or out the door, you know, 20 minutes away, I still have that. So that's my, if it's not dinging, a paper calendar doesn't do it for me. Although I have many lists, I have them all over the place. They're all over the, they're all over the house. They're what typed, you? handwritten. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about, Tammy. Yeah. Yeah. So, but for me, it's my phone. That's I have a calendar on my phone. Yeah. Whatever works for you. And I love how you said, um, you have lists and you have your phone. Um, because I, for a long time, um, I was using, I do still use my, um, my count, like my phone stuff for the dings, but I had so many going at one time. I was like, it was like whiplash and I was starting to get so much anxiety. So what I have found for me, that's working is my paper calendar. And then what I'll do is I love this card stock from, um, Michael's it's like little, po- little mini poster boards to me. And so what I do is like, before I go to bed, I look at my paper calendar and then I write out like my five must do's that next day or whatever it is. And then I, I know it's so stupid, but I literally put it on my seat. 
So then when I come into my office, I pick it up and I go, okay, this is what's happening today. And then because every day as an entrepreneur, as y'all know, um, looks really different. So those are great tips. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, I know um, I know you have some tips for us too, Kristen. So what are some like habits for success that's making this work for you? Um, for me, it's because I have ADHD. So I am very, um, I don't want to use the word scattered, but that, you know, from that movie up, you know, that squirrel kind of, yes. something catches my attention. And I am very, I walk into a room with the intention of working on one project and something is out of order and I start working on a new project. Like everything can catch my attention into a different direction very easily. Um, and so I, I am a list maker to the T. I, I definitely have a lot of lists, but the one that I kind of um, is my holy grail, I guess you could say that I live by and I feel successful um, and it gives me that dopamine hit is the one on my phone. Um, I can't remember the app, but it's the one that comes with the Apple phones, um, where you can put the little bubble. Um, it's just that, that standard, um, it's note the taking. Note, the notes. Yeah. The notes. Yeah. 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 Oh, and so I put, yes. I use that, like. And I, I make one every night and say, you know, Tuesday, that's literally the title of every, every night I'll do it for the next day. And that's the title of to do's. Mm -hmm. And I put the little bubble and everything, even mundane things of like shower, because when you have ADHD, sometimes you don't even remember to take a shower. <laughs> like I have to put my deodorant out on the counter because I won't remember to put it on. Yeah. It's. You, you're forgetful like mm -hmm. forgetful is not a very good term but you just get sidetracked very easily and so if it's not on my list to check it off mm -hmm. and I get that I feel successful when things are checked off so when I get to hit that bubble and it's completed and I see that check mark I feel successful mm -hmm. and so I, and I don't have to feel successful for that whole list to be completed and so my daughter is, is kind of similar. And so I kind of help her um, to do the same thing for, and you can work that into your everyday life with anything. And I remind her and anybody who struggles with just getting stuff done and feeling successful for the day, put the little things on there. It doesn't have to be completed a 500 page, you know, essay. Like it doesn't have to be a monumental you know, task or a goal that's going to take you a year. It, it can be made my bed. It can be took a shower, unload the dishwasher, like something took the kids to school on time. Like it can be literally the smallest things made an appointment, you know, for that paint party or called somebody back. It really can be the smallest thing. So if it's, you know, 30 things long and you did five of them, you see that little check mark and you're going to feel successful because you saw a check mark. And so that really helps me. I notice on days where um, I don't make the list because sometimes I just got too busy the night before and I was tired. Like I had a paint party that night and I just went to bed and didn't make my list for the next day. And it's, I don't get anything done the next day because I didn't create a list. Like I'm all over the place of like, gosh, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Somebody tell me what I'm supposed to do today. <laughs> I feel like I'm five years old and I need a mom to tell me what to do. So I live by my lists. I, I make paper lists all the time because I keep a notebook by my bed of like, I'll have random ideas in the middle of the night. And so I, I definitely do that. And I'm a night owl for sure. Um, but I love to snuggle with my husband and my dog in bed and he goes to bed early. And so I definitely work a lot from my phone at night until like I do emails and my constant contact emails. I'll do all of that stuff like into two, three in the morning, but I do a lot of stuff from bed into the wee hours of the night, but that's how I get a lot of stuff done. 
So, you know, you just kind of have to work with whatever your rhythm is and not fight what your pattern is. Um, if you're not a morning person, don't, don't try to force yourself to be a morning person and get up at six in the morning and try to get stuff done because you're just not going to be very successful. I let myself, I give myself grace and let myself sleep until seven and then slowly wake up with a cup of coffee. And then I start work at nine. I mean, I let myself ease into the day to be successful because I know I'm going to be up until three in the morning <laughs> because I'm more focused at midnight than I am at 8 a.m. So it's oh it, you, ha you have to work with how your your brain works, I think, and whatever system you feel comfortable working with. But I'm definitely a note taker. And I think notes, that note app is a life changer for me. <laughs> yes. I have so many things I want to touch on on that. So the note app, I, I use it not only for like reminders or if I'm inspired and I don't have a pen or paper, which is usually never. So I always have yep. pen papers everywhere. Um, but to have it as like, um, I love the idea of you having it as a checklist mm -hmm. because it has that feeling because there is nothing better than having a checklist and going. Exactly. It gives yeah. you that same yeah. sensation. Yes. And and I, I love like if I have it in, in pen, doing it with a sharp, it even feels more complete, you know? And, <laughs> and so I don't know what it is about that. So if you are using the, the, the notepad on your app, I use it for when every time I do a TikTok and a reel. If you've done all of that verbiage, hey, here's my, what my TikTok's about and all my hashtags, you can copy it, but TikTok ain't going to let you paste it when you go to upload it on Reels on Instagram and Facebook. So I'll go to my notes, paste it. That way, when I go to my Reels on Instagram, copy, paste, copy, paste. So yeah, that note, if you haven't used that yet, that is really, really great. And that's a great I've, tip, Kristen. I've um, also used it for when I'm driving. And I've um, come across, like, I see a business that I want to contact. Um, I'll use the the voice. Um, I'll yeah. push the voice activated business in my notes app and say, hey, remember to contact such and such. Mm -hmm. And so I'll have like a notes. I have a notes category um, of who I want to contact for businesses as a reminder to, you know, when I'm home yeah. to email because I won't remember by the time I get home, even if I repeat it to myself a million times and I'm five minutes away from home, I won't remember that business. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. And I, I know we talked, there's two other things I wanted to touch on from what you said and um, talking about like, and I know um, Tammy mentioned this as well, like ADHD, you know, like having those moments of just squirrel, right? And I, I used to get so frustrated with myself because I would be unloading the dishwasher and then I would literally like get squirrel and I'd be like in the middle of painting a painting and then my husband's like why is the dishwasher open and I'm like I didn't even know I was there like I didn't even know I came over <laughs> and then I remember years ago I said I think I have ADHD and he's like you think like you're just not figuring this out and but the thing I think and this is why I love talking to y'all is um I don't like I feel like it's a superpower in a weird way because I feel like because we're able to go here, do this, be here, like we're able to juggle a lot of things. And I think as a creative, it leads us to curiosity. We see something and then all of a sudden we're directed and then we're like, oh my gosh, we've, we've taken one thing that we saw that squirreled us and now we you know, spiraled it into a zillion ways that we can figure out how to make a certain kit to make money with because we had that curiosity and that that train of thought and so I think it really is a superpower if we know how to harness it mm -hmm. one of the things that um recently like I I basically cover my entire office in papers like I cleaned it up for y'all but um <laughs> before this it was a disaster and so what I have found that has helped me too is I will take every single thing out of my office and put it in the hallway. And then I go, okay, what do I need to have back in this room? And then I've, I've you know, done that with Pixie since she was little. And I think that helps too, as a creative who we have so many ideas that we're putting, you know, all over the place. Um, and then the, the last thing I wanted to touch on before I ask my next question is um, 
talking about being a night owl, talking about how sometimes we work better even in the night. And I used to get real, like, I used to think that there was this certain way people had a marriage, right? You know, we had to go to bed at the same time. We need to wake up at the same time and have our coffee together. Like that was like how marriage was supposed to be, right? Like sometimes we have these ideas in our head that are not true. And one time I read um, an article about Fixer Upper Chip and Joanna Gaines and their, their marriage and how he's like early, early to bed, early riser. And she's like the more creative night owl and sleeps in. And I remember thinking, okay, if Chip and Joanna can like have different sleep schedules and still make it work <laughs> with five kids, <laughs> like, you know, there, you know, we can do this too. And, and it doesn't mean both, you know, humans being in bed at the same time means a successful marriage. And I think a lot of times we put that guilt on ourselves when really it's like, okay, we're creative. We're, you know, 11, 12 o'clock at nights when we're creating our best work, why are we going against that and trying to wake up at 6 a.m. when it doesn't make sense? So I love all of that. Okay, next question. What is your, okay, so this kind of is a two-part question. And I'm gonna start with Tammy first. Can you tell us maybe what is one of the hardest parts about being an entrepreneur um, with this paint party world? And then what is one of your favorite things about being an entrepreneur in this paint party world? Okay. So the hardest part is not having someone to tell me to do something mm. and the squirrels. I mean, that's for me. Some of my best work I get done at the last minute I think just because, I don't know, I guess my whole life, that's what I've done, procrastinated, procrastinated, and then you have to get it done. But sometimes I'm just like, I'm not feeling it. I'm not, I'm not feeling creative to create that, whatever it is I need to do. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. I'm getting a little, it's like, well, time crunch, time crunch. Don't like that part of it. But then in the end, in the last hour, it comes together. And I'm like, this is the time I was supposed to do that. So, you know, but that for me, not having someone to answer to, mm -hmm. that's the hardest part for me. And then the best part, I love helping people. I mean, that's just my, that's my love language. If I can make you feel good, I feel good. So when someone yeah, at the end of a paint party, when I hold it back and say, let me, here, let me have your canvas. Let me, let me move it back for you. You know, so it's not right in front of your face. Move it back, move it back. And their face is like, oh, oh well, yeah, that's not too bad, is it? I'm like, no, it's great. That, and I even got chills right now. It just, that's what I so love about it. It's awesome. It is. It is. I love telling people like, okay, look away from it for a second. Don't look, don't look, and then look back, you know, because it's like when they're staring at it for so long. So I love that um that it it is hard. It is so hard not having somebody tell us what to do. And I was about to say that's one of the best parts too of you know being a um in control of your business. Absolutely. Someone tell you what to do when <laughs> whatever. Yes. So yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely goes both ways. And I love um I love that you love helping people. I think. That's one of the things that drives us all. I mean, you know, that's that's the thing about like making money with our art. And you're a fine artist, so you know that side of things too. Um, a lot of times it can be so hard to make money as an artist, but then once you figure out how to do it, it's like, this is really, really cool. And if you can do that and also make other people feel good while you're doing that, that's like a jackpot. So that's really cool, Tammy. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, Kristen, what is your favorite part about this paint party entrepreneur world? And what is, well, start with your least favorite part, like the, the, the biggest struggle, and then tell us what your favorite part is. I would say my least favorite is um, the self-doubt. Um, I think with the highs and lows that come with um, in particular, the paint party business, mm -hmm. everybody has those cancellation parties and the no shows and, um, just the, the misses on, you know, this, this paint painting didn't sell or just being an artist of you think a particular painting is awesome. And it just didn't, wasn't the right fit. You know, it just didn't 
hit the market the right way that you thought it would, um, I think you begin to doubt yourself a lot as an artist. And I think that for me in particular is, I well, I think everybody struggles with that, every creative. Um, but that's for me the hardest part um, because you don't get the validation as much being um, a creative. And I think in general, people like the validation. <laughs> um, and so not having that because you are your own boss, you don't get that daily validation. Um, and so that, that for me is the hardest part. Um, but with being my own boss, um, setting my own schedule is definitely one of the best things I ever did. Um, I was working um, an eight to five job in an environment that wasn't very healthy. And I loved the people around me, but my supervisor wasn't the best. We didn't get along so great. And so that wasn't very healthy for me. And so when I made the decision to quit, it was like, a weight was lifted off me. I got to spend time with my kids. I take them to school. I pick them up when they want to go. They were able to take on new activities that now that they're in high school, they were never able to do before because they were always before five o'clock activities. They were able to get jobs now because I can take them at three o'clock in the afternoon, whereas before working till five, I couldn't. So spending time with my kids and cooking dinner for my kids at a decent hour, those are all huge benefits being able to work from home and setting my own schedule and working paint parties around my kids' schedule has been a huge blessing um, for our family in general. That's so I wouldn't trade it for the world. So it's, it's been, the money hasn't been, um, obviously it doesn't compare to what I made at an eight to five, 40 hour a week job, but I never went into the paint party business to replace my 40 hour a week salary. Mm -hmm. I have always loved art. And so I wanted other people to get the same feeling from art that I did. I wanted it to be as therapeutic for them to understand how much it can improve their life as it has improved mine um, with just painting and showing themselves that they can create you don't have to think you're an artist you are an artist everybody's an artist it's just how many times a day you're going to paint is is the only difference between me and them and so I wanted to you know show people that so that's the best thing that I could have have ever thought comes out of this paint party business well and there's something to you about um you get to choose how much you want to make, you know, so yes. if you want this to be where it's something part-time, you know, and you have more time to take your kids during this mm -hmm. season of your life, then of course, you know, and then there's other people that, that are doing, you know, 40 parties in a month, you know, it all, I think it all depends on your season of life. I mean, there was mm -hmm. a season where I was cramming in as many parties physically able, you know, cause it was mm -hmm. replacing my entire teaching salary. And then, um, and then there's a season where, okay, I want to kind of chill this summer. I, you know, went crazy during the the fall and the, the Christmas time. So I love, I think that's one of my favorite things about this is the flexibility. Exactly. Yeah. Not only the flexibility, like just for one season, you can change it up however you mm -hmm. want. If all of a sudden you're like, okay, I want to throw some gasoline on this fire and go for it. You can. And then if you're like, okay, I'm going to back off a little bit. You just don't book the parties and don't, yeah. don't contact the places. And so I love that so much because now you're able, and that's, that's going to be stuff, Kristen, that you never regret, like taking yeah. your kids to school, picking them up, getting them to where they need to be with their jobs. That's stuff you'll never regret that you yep. were at your corporate job for. So, oh, that's also good. Okay. So let's end with, um, one final thing. Okay. So Tammy, if you could, first off, like you're going to share your, your business name, where they can find you, all of that great stuff. And then also share kind of, um, if somebody was thinking about 
teaching a paint party or selling art kits or, you know, doing some small commissions, like getting into this paint party world. And what would be your biggest piece of advice? Okay, sorry, I forgot the first question. I'm very oh, sorry. That's okay. Share, share. This is this is why we all work, right? <laughs> um, share where they can find you. So if they're looking you up on socials, website, things like that first. All right. So um, my paint party business is the Spirited Canvas. And, um, you know, I've got that. And then I have a website to uh, do as I say, not as I do. I've kind of neglected that for a little while. But still, the um, not to get too techie, but the SEO is there. The search engine, you know, keywords, people can still just do a Google and find my website. From the Spirited Canvas? Is that what it's yeah. called? Spirited Canvas? Yeah. The okay. Spirited Canvas. Yeah. So um, that's where you can find me. And I've. Um, I love that name, by the way. It's so oh, cool. <laughs> thank you. So I've been in business 12 years. Nice. And it was, it was. Uh, naming it is probably the hardest part of getting started. It's like, what, what are we going to call this? And my husband and I came up with it and he said, you know, I really like that. He said, it's got a double meaning there. And I said, I know, I like that. So, um, so that's where you can find me. Now you're going to have to ask me the other question again. And so anybody, <laughs> no, it's totally fine. <laughs> so I, I think I know what the double meaning is, but do you mind sharing it? Oh, yeah. So when all of this started for me, the the sip and paint, you know, brick and mortar companies were out there and it was all about having drinks and painting. So sip and paint. So spirited, you know, spirits, yes. drink spirits. Um, but then for us, of, of uh, you know, what we have in our daily lives is the Holy Spirit. So that was it for us. I yeah. love that. So cool. Okay, awesome. And then the next question, if somebody's trying to start this paint party adventure, and um, whether it's doing paint kits, paint parties, selling porch laners, whatever, and um, what would be your biggest piece of advice? So for me, now some people may not agree with this, but for me, what works is to practice, practice, practice. So if I'm going to teach a painting whatever it is, I probably paint it three times mm, wow. because I need to mess up. I need to make, you know, it's like, oh, I got the black over that. How am I going to cover that black? You've got to work through all of those and all of those things that you learn every time will, will, you know, serve you forever. But for me, if I practice something a couple different times, I feel really good about walking in there and I'm prepared ready to help them with their problems that's all, what it's all about we're helping them we're showing them how to do this so that works well for me and then just do it just do it and be you know be real about it don't stand up there and say i have an art degree and i've been an oil painter for da da no i mean i'm a crafter i was a crafter as a child and just worked on into it and i love to paint and that's what i talk about i love to paint and i love to teach so i brought that together and it's worked really well so uh, for me practicing what i'm going to do ahead of time that's probably the biggest thing and then being organized Lots of times when I come in with the tubs of stuff, you know, everybody's like, oh, you're so organized. Yeah. For me, I have to be. I count my paintbrushes twice. I don't, I don't rely on, uh, I don't have anybody else who's counting the paintbrushes for me. So I'll make sure. And I always put five extra of everything in. Yes. If I have 25 painters, I'm not walking in with 25 paintbrushes because the it's going to come undone or there's going to be a, you know, wonky stuff going everywhere. I have five extra of everything. And I even have, I brought my little cheat sheet. I have this hanging near the garage door where I'm going to pack my car. So that big car packing you saw, I've got everything. And I said, easels plus five, canvases plus five, aprons plus five. 
So then you've got last minute, you know, people walking by. It's like, oh, so you want to, okay, I've got another spot. Yeah. I'm like, really? So, you know, last minute stuff. So for me, just being organized and knowing ahead of time and packing the day before, that works well for me. Mm -hmm. And then I can go to sleep. And it's not all, you know, oh, I need to do this, this, this. So that makes it more fun for me, more fun and less um, nerve wracking. You know, I know I've got it all done. Yeah. I that answered your question. Yeah. Having, um, having it done the day before <clears throat> sure is helpful. Um, oh my gosh, that is so helpful. And I love that you have the plus five. Um, I do the same thing. I always bring extra because I cannot tell you how many parties I have done where we ran out or ran out of paint. I mean, I've had that happen too. And every situation possible, I've had it happen to me. And it just makes you go, ah, like, you know, I know I can do better, you know, and then, and so then you just do better the next time too. So that's, that's all really good. So and can I have one other thing real quick? Yeah. So now that paint kits, you know, we're all, not all of us, but a lot of us are doing paint kits. I have found that having those with you, or at least having the little paint pots or something, give them a brush, you know, send something home with them if um, necessary. But also like for my big parties, if everybody doesn't show up, they've already paid for it. So they paid for 86 canvases and you know paints and all that stuff so what I've done lately is um, I'll either have the materials there with me and I just leave it all with him and written instructions or you know if 10 people didn't show up I'll say I'll get the paint kits to you tomorrow mm -hmm. and then I'll come back and I'll make them all and deliver them it's because the the canvas is already sketched it's ready to go they paid for it yeah. So that makes a happy customer too, because you're not walking out with stuff that they paid for and they can use those. I mean, they can give them out to other people, whoever wasn't able to come. I think that's good customer service, especially if it's prepaid, leave yeah. it with them. And you're not having to do refunds either, or that awkward conversation of, well, we had six people that didn't show up, you know? Yes. Yes. I love yeah. that. That's great. That's good because it's like, you're, are, you're always going a step above. And I think that's something that, um, and let us know in the comments if, if when you do this, are you one of those people like you go a step above? Because I think that's going to make the difference. And that's why, Tammy, every year they contact you back again, because you're going a step above. And um, I always, anytime I put on any event, um, I always go, okay, this is the norm. Like, this is the basic, this is the norm. What can I do to make it way cool, you know, and then just add those elements of making it better so that, um, so that you can just keep having those recurring customers every time and bringing those extra art kits so you can give them if people don't show up, actually bring it in to sell, you know, around, uh, and, you know, yes. yeah, people buy them to go, um, is another great thing. Anytime I do, um, ceramics, you know, you always order extra because of breakage and stuff like that. I will literally bring all of the extra ceramics and just be like, yes, if you want to take one to go to do later, because a lot of times people want a second or a third, and then you're selling your stock and um, at the, the retail price, of course. So um, that's all very great tips, Tammy. I love that. Um, okay, so let's have Kristen share where they can find you first, and then I want you to share one piece of advice that would help somebody if they're wanting to get into this paint party adventure. Um, you can find me. I'm on Facebook, um, Art for the Soul by Kristen. I'm on Instagram, Art for the number, uh, Art for the Soul by Kristen. And then I also am on YouTube and um, Pinterest. I just started Pinterest. Yay! And then um, I also have the website, Art for the Soul by Kristen.com. Um, and you can purchase off of that as well. Um, but one piece of advice that I would give, um, is if you're really serious about doing it is just get your feet wet and do it. Um, I was nervous about it in October and I just did a, um, guinea pig party with some friends and then I kind of reached out to, um, a bigger 
extended family. And I was like, hey, anybody want to do? Um, it was getting to kind of Christmas time, the holidays when I started last year. And um, they didn't want to do um, like a paint party, but they always did. Um, it was like a second cousin. And she's she they always have a huge family party. And, um, and so she's like, well, we, we do a family party, so can we order kits? And so they ended up ordering like 30 kits from me last year. So that was kind of awesome. And then they loved them. So then another cousin ended up liking him so much that was at the party. She talked to her boss and they did, a um, because COVID was still a thing last Christmas, they ended up doing a Zoom corporate party. Um, so they ordered 35 kits um, and did a Zoom Christmas party from me. And so it just kind of, you just kind of reach out to family and friends to kind of get your toes wet. And then it gives you the confidence to start reaching out to kind of cold calling and emailing if you're too kind of, I don't want to use the word chicken, but if you're nervous about calling people on the phone then just start emailing um people that you can think of look them restaurants up um on the internet local restaurants look up bookstores coffee shops bless you excuse um, me i knew it was coming and i <laughs> cute. i didn't want it to overtake the sneeze overtake <laughs> thank you go ahead but uh yeah just you know you just got to get your feet wet there's there's you're never going to be comfortable doing it until you do it. Right. Um, and then once you start doing it, it becomes second nature. You're always going to have the, I think the butterflies. Um, but the more you do it, the better and more comfortable you'll feel about doing it. Um, yeah. I have a party tonight and I don't know. I know one person um, actually, well, that's not true. Um, two are repeat customers. Mm -hmm. They came to a paint party back in May that I did. So that's kind of awesome. I feel yeah. kind of feel successful that I have a repeat customer <laughs> yes. and one is a neighbor. So she's bringing a couple friends and then some people I don't know. So it's, it's kind of fun. You know, it's nerve wracking when you don't know a huge room of people, but then at the same time, when you know one familiar face, it's like, oh, okay, I got this. Yeah. So you just have to get your feet wet and do it. And then once you do it more and more, it becomes second nature and make lists. So you don't forget stuff. <laughs> yes. And oh my gosh, I don't know if y'all heard the through line, but basically she had some family parties and then it just kept spinning off into other things. And I think that is so important to hear. If you didn't take notes on that, right. I highly recommend you writing that down or at least typing it in the comments so you won't forget it. But you know, those, those family parties, uh, practice parties can turn into, oh, well, you know, my cousin does this and then it comes, you know, into a corporate party and then, then it gets, you know, passed to somebody else. And then you have repeat customers. And then guess what? Yeah. You have the, you know, like Tammy every year, you have the same and you know, medical students. Off of, off of that corporate party, I ended up getting a few more customers um, that yeah. wanted kits. Yeah. Because they had fun at the corporate party, the virtual corporate party. I ended up getting a couple more customers that their husbands and them wanted to do. So it it kind of snowballs into other customers. So, you know, starting with family, it just helps and kind of rolls into other customers. So reaching out to your family isn't necessarily a bad thing. Right. Yeah, especially you can't, if like just doing a free party just to yeah. get you at. You can't depend on them. Don't don't think that's going to be your livelihood. But <laughs> to start out, it's definitely nice to reach out to them and say, hey, do you guys want to do, you know, I'm doing this. Do you want to do a small party and then, you know, offer or, you know, a cheaper version if you can't feasibly do a free party, right. offer it to, um, you know, $10, $12 a person or whatever is comfortable for you, then it it helps because it can snowball yeah. that works into well, bigger too. things yeah to offer at a at a smaller price i've done that to just get some seats filled mm -hmm. you know my close friends and they brought a couple friends so all these fun people 
they're all having a great time. And it, I just did one not too long ago. And I brought, I always bring my other paintings, you know, holidays that are coming up and all that stuff. And I display them. It makes it look like an art studio, you know, as you're painting. Mm -hmm. And they were looking at it. They're like, oh, I want to do the elf shoes. Oh, I like the snowman. And I'm like, those are simple enough. We can do painter's choice. You can do whichever one you want. We can have a party. We can do all of that. So yeah, talk it up. Um, and for sure have, you know, take that opportunity to market the next party too. Mm -hmm. Can I share one thing? Yes. I'm like, all this is so good. <laughs> okay. So this is, this is so simple, but it works so well for me. And I, I, Whenever I uh, talk to a customer about, you know, what do you need? They'll ask me, what do you need? What do you need? Do you need, you need a table, right? I'm like, no, I bring my own table. And they're like, okay, that's fine. So my table, I, this is a little show and tell because it works so well. I, I get these, they're Sterilite tubs. Okay. And they fit the 16 by 20 canvases. They're the 27 gallon ones. They'll hold 21 or 22 canvases. Stack them in and then you can get two on top. I bring always two of these. So I bring my canvases in here and then I will bring my extras. You know, the, the other ones that I wanna sell, they could be paint kits, they could be, um, you know, your designs that you're bringing up in the next holiday. And then I stack those. I empty one and then on the other one and I stack them and it gets to be about this high. With and I can right off of that. With four of them? There's two. Oh, okay. Oh, you just only need two. There, you only need two of them and it's okay. just the right height. So here they are, these empty tubs. It sets right next to my easel. It's out of the way. It's small. It works great. So I had to you share that. Do you cover it with like a tablecloth? No, I don't. Did you just go with it with it? Because that might be kind of cool too to have a tablecloth so it looks like it's an official table up there. It could. Yes, it absolutely could. I've never thought about that. That's a great idea. It would look a little more, a little more fancy. <laughs> yeah, if you want to I, look, but you don't have to. I, you know, I paint on the lids. You can paint it fun too. But that just works really well for me. And then I don't have extra. I don't have to worry about a table for myself. It's always it's always there. That's great. That is a great <laughs> tip. I, and I'm writing all this down. I really hope all of you listening are commenting and taking notes because these are two successful and people doing the paint party business right now. <laughs> I know so many people go, well, it can't happen because of X, Y, Z. And, and I always love that quote. Um, I think it's Henry Ford that says, if you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right. And um, it's so true. You know, we could sit there all day and, and listen to the news and, you know, never get out of bed because we're all so depressed, or we can start making some lists. We can start making things happen and we can start listening to people like Kristen and Tammy who are out there actually doing it right now. And um, so I just, I love everything there is about the paint party world. And um, it is amazing. It's changed my family's life. And um, just listening to y'all, it sounds like it is a huge part of your life as well. <laughs> um, and I just think it's so, so important that we, we stop going into a place of fear of, I can't make this happen and start listening to people real time, making it happen. They're not talking about decades ago. They're talking about right now, making this happen and you can too. So Tammy, Kristen, thank you so much for spending time with us. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for thank having you. me. Oh, yeah. You're welcome. I Everyone else, if you want to find out more about them, I want you to go for Tammy. You're going to go to the Spirited Canvas if you want to find out more about her. And for Kristen, you're going to go to Art for the Soul by Kristen. And so we'll have this in the notes as well. So if you want to find out more and um, everybody out there, good luck on your paint party adventure and we'll see you soon. Bye guys. Bye.